Brentwood, Tennessee. We're here to see some great containers. They are filled with lush, beautiful flowers, shrubs, annuals, and perennials. I'm here with Hope Campbell. Hope, yeah. they're gorgeous. Oh, thank you. Tell me how you do it. Ah, uh, I love color. As you know, to salmon. Yes. Orange. And so I'm always on the lookout for um, beautiful containers because not only are flowers beautiful, but I think what you put them in should be equally beautiful. Correct. And in this pot, I, I use the principle of the thriller. Uh huh. The fillers. Correct. And then spillers. So my thriller is my Mandevilla. <laughs> I'm from Manville, Jamaica. And then I have some sunflower hybrids, Pentos, these little pink ones, and Portulacas um, as my fillers. And then I have my ivy draping the container. Um, and since this container has some height to it, it allows um, the ivy to cascade over the side. And what's right here in front of me? That's Ixora. Coming in will be the lantanas, draping the sides, it's creeping Jenny. I love your color combination. And right here? Uh, that's a mandevilla, more on the bush version versus this one that was on the, the trellis. All right, let's go see some more pots. Awesome. So we're filming the first week of June here, and you have hibiscus blooming. How does that work? I was fortunate in that I wintered these plants over from last year. Oh wait, let's talk about that. So you dolly them into the garage or you slap them in there? Dolly them in to my husband's uh, <laughs> <laughs> dismay. Yeah, yeah, poor guy. Yes. <laughs> and so we put them all in, fill up the garage, take up a whole bay. I water them a little bit. Mm -hmm. during the winter. Let's talk about fertilization for your pots when they're outside here and then do you fertilize them in the winter or you're, they're sleeping so you just kind of let them go or what do you do? For the most part, I let them sleep. Okay. And then round about February, I'll put a little bit of um, fertilizer, uh -huh. something like Merca Grow. Okay and see how they respond. So use blood meal and bone meal. Okay. Depending on what I see on the plant. If I need a little bit more green color, if it's newer, the newer the plant, I'll do more of the nitrogen that I get with the, with the blood meal. Let's talk about these two pretty pots. <laughs> so these, these pots here were green. Right, and, and, um, lime the, green. Right, and the blooms are pink. Okay. So over here, the pot is yellow, and I went for a pink and white bloom. The, beside it, we have an, a hibiscus that's in a purple pot uh, with blue days coming out of it. I had this plant, originally I had it set up with red, white, and blue. Oh, cool. Kind of. Yeah. Um, and certain of the, the um, annuals just mm -hmm. didn't do well. But I was able to winter over okay. the new days. It's the pretty. Days. It's pretty. It did well. Yes, um, yes. And has done well um, over time. These color combos, I think it might be one of my favorites in your garden here, in your container gardens. What, what do you have planted in here? Uh, this is a barberry, and it is called Orange Rocket. It's uh -huh. a new variety. Um, new as of just a few years. And I've combined it with the coral bells and petunias, honey, petunias, coral bells. Those are beautiful. And so this is my first year trying these. And so to give contrast, I put them in a blue pot. So when you go to a garden center or wherever you buy your, your flowers or your starts or your plants, do you have it in your mind? What, what color combos you want to find? Or do you just let find a pot and the pot speaks to you or find a couple plants and they speak to you? Usually the plant speaks to me. Okay. And I'll start from the plant. Once I have my feature plant, then I build around that feature. All right. And so in this case, the colors of this the plant, barber, yeah. it's going to get, it has burgundy, orange, and it can get a little bit, if you notice in here, green, yeah, chartreuse it's more chartreuse green. Yeah. And so I think about what pot will I take it home and put it in. All right, tell me about this combination. Okay, so this combination, I have the white with the oleander mm -hmm. being my um, thriller plant. Okay. Okay, this is tropical 
I'm accustomed to having it in my yard in the islands. And then I used as a filler, I used petunia. Mm -hmm. And then I'm using this, like a water grass that will spill over mm -hmm. the purple. So I'll have purple, pink, white in this basket. That's pretty. And it's a literal basket weave pot. Great. I never move this particular pot. I don't uh. try to window it over because it's too heavy. So yes. I'll take out the contents. All right, let's go find some more of your beautiful containers. All right, this is a goldfish plant. Yes, or is it a shrimp plant? Shrimp plant. Shrimp plant. And this is pretty large for June. Is this another one of these containers you've wintered over? It's the container I wintered over. You can barely see the color of the pot. This one is a golden colored pot. And I have cascading over the sides, lantanas. These were trailing lantanas. Um, because it's been in the garage for a while, it's taken a little bit of time to get its color back in. Okay. And so I've added some nitrogen to help it. Do you cut these things back when you bring them out in the spring? Sometimes, Sometimes. depending on the plant. Okay. If they're um, dead portions, mm -hmm. I will clip those off. I was going to trim these, but then I started seeing blooms at uh. the end, at the tips. And I thought, you know, it's going to be good. It's going to be good. So I yeah. left it. And so what's right here in front of you? Uh, these are just very standard. We call them spikes. spikes. Yeah. And with some Persian queen here and lantanas. I guess you heard me say lantana a couple of times. Seems yeah. to be one of my faves. Yeah, right? well, it's a great one for in the south. It does a fantastic job. Full sun job. and drought tolerant. Yeah. I bet you that would be gorgeous, though, because when that blossoms out the yellow with the purple is going to be right. really really showy. So I tend to love purple, yellow, and chartreuse green. So lime green, purple, and um, when I do pinks, I do pinks with purple and and white. I also do this with probably add in silver in there mm -hmm. um, to pick up on the the shadowing of that purple leaf. Mm -hmm. I'll probably put like a dusty miller in. Gotcha. I see one more pot or one more container we've got to go check out <laughs> okay. before we leave. All right, uh, let's go. I have to say, I think this might be one of my favorite containers, the pot especially, but you said it lost its pedestal. <laughs> so, you know, that's the thing. Gardeners got to remember that just because a pedestal breaks, you can't use it still. It's gorgeous. There you go. I absolutely love this pot. It's, it ten it's a little heavy, so it when I put it here, it stays here. Okay. So I don't try to winter this one over. Um, therefore, I invest just smaller annuals. And this is more shade here, obviously. Much more shade. Yeah. So I have in this one, as my thriller, I have my Hawaiian tea, some begonias. How large, not to interrupt you, but how, lar how large is this going to get? It will probably get another six inches. And I'm not familiar with this. Will this flower at all? Like it, no, it doesn't. Okay. It's okay. there just for its the foliage. foliage. Okay. Just for its foliage. And um, to kind of fill in a little bit, I added some spikes mm -hmm. and then lower down to add color since the tea doesn't bloom. I've added some begonias, this time using greens and um, orange. Even using this time a trailing begonia to the front. Mm -hmm. So that will spill over the basket on the front on the front end along with the with the ivy here. And the coleus picks up that lime green of yes. that begonia. I repeat the color. Mm -hmm. Pick one color from a plant and repeat it in, in, in others. Well you know what? Your containers are gorgeous. Thank you. Thank you for sharing today. You're so welcome. Thanks for coming. For inspiring garden tours, growing tips, and garden projects, visit our website at volunteergardener.org or on YouTube at the Volunteer Gardener channel and like us on Facebook.